everybody, I'm Yasmin Benoit. I'm a model and asexual activist, and I'm going to be speaking at the Shrewsbury Colleges group on June the 21st, which I'm really looking forward to. And in the meantime, I was asked to send in a little video talking a bit about my experience as someone growing up asexual and to offer advice to others that are potentially going through the same thing. So I always say that I realized I was asexual when my peers realized that they weren't, which is pretty much like early puberty. But I didn't discover the term until I was about 15 years old. I was quite lucky to be part of a very Tumblr generation where it was kind of trendy to know about like lesser known sexual orientations. And there was already kind of existing information online. So it wasn't too hard to find out like the definition and to find YouTube videos on asexuality and hear about the diversity of the spectrum of all of these different people that experience little to no sexual attraction like I do. Um, but at the same time, I did have a hard time like really using the label because it seemed to be something that only existed on the internet and I didn't really see anyone that I could relate to beyond their experience of asexuality. It was a very white community. Um, so people didn't really believe me when I told them that I was asexual. I think it's particularly hard for people to um, believe that black women are asexual. And so I had the label, I kind of had the knowledge for myself, but it wasn't something I could really use. And it wasn't something that I really felt like that confident in. So I didn't really have like this kind of like epiphany moment <laughs> that most would kind of expect you to have once you find out what your identity is. And I, I lived a very, very discreet asexual life for a very long time where I kind of avoided the conversation. I didn't really mention it until I was like finishing college, which was when I was also starting my own activism. And once it was sort of verified by people seeing that I was finding success through my work, then people started to believe that I was actually asexual. And then I was able to really use the term. And then I started meeting asexual people in real life and seeing that there was more racial diversity within the community than was usually represented. And then I felt a lot more comfortable using the label and being believed as someone who is asexual. Like I could kind of live my life a lot more openly. Um, so it was quite like a long process. Like the coming out process was like a decade long and like, feeling comfortable enough to actually identify as asexual wasn't as quick as people would probably think it is. Uh, so my advice for people and teenagers and young adults that are kind of trying to work out whether they're asexual and are going through college and university is honestly that don't place so much emphasis on it. Like it's only one aspect of who you are. And if it is helpful for you to use the terminology and it helps you to articulate yourself and it helps you feel connected to people, then I would totally recommend doing it, but it isn't actually essential. Like there's such a kind of blueprint for how everyone thinks you're supposed to come out and everyone, how, how you think people are supposed to react to you and how you think your experience is supposed to go and then how you're supposed to feel once it's happened. And it really doesn't work that way for everybody. There's so many intersections and so many like circumstantial differences and cultural differences, which will impact how that goes. So. Don't place so much emphasis on thinking that it's going to be a certain way. Just find comfort and find peace within yourself. Find self-acceptance within yourself. That is what matters the most. Find confidence in different areas of your life. And then I think eventually everything will just fall into place.